With the Florida Panthers holding a 3-0 series lead in the Stanley Cup Finals, we had this tweet go viral yesterday that I wanted to talk about. It's from Adam from at Kachuk U, whom you could very well assume is a Florida Panthers fan, and he tweeted this out saying that Jonathan Huberdeau has to be sick to his stomach, man. LMAO. Now, this, of course, is a very simple tweet. It's a small idea, but it opens the door to a bigger and badder conversation about Mr. Huberto himself. And do I want to say how unlucky he is? Is this a product of him just being at the wrong place at the wrong time? Who really knows? Because Jonathan Huberdeau, at 31 years old, making $10.5 million a year till the end of 2031. My goodness. Oh, I just realized. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I just noticed now that Cap Friendly is the main source for all of these contracts on Elite Prospects. What's going to happen when Cap Friendly is down? Are they still going to have these, like, pop-up menus that show up that have the contract stuff? Ay ay ay, that's going to be really difficult to work with, but either way, Jonathan Huberto's making a lot of money. He has been making this amount of money since this season. It's the first year he's made 10.5 million dollars and he wrapped up the year with 52 points in 81 games played. Not a 10.5 million dollar caliber season. We recognize that he was a Florida Panther for a long time, starting out in 2012-13, inevitably playing his last season 10 years later, 115 points in 80 games played, and 5 points in 10 games in the playoffs that year. Jonathan Huberdeau was a monster, and for a good chunk of his career, I think he was the top Florida Panthers point guy ever? Something like that? I mean, we can go over on a quant hockey and take a look at that, but Jonathan Huberdeau, as a guy, has been one of the best Florida Panthers of all time. I mean, you take a look at the all-time records, he should be right up there. If not, yeah, number two. Okay, so number two behind Alexander Barkov. If you remove the Barkov seasons from prior, you probably would see Huberdeau at number one. He was one of the most important players of all time for this organization. And the funny part is, the moment he gets traded from Florida, Guess what? The Florida Panthers make the Stanley Cup Finals in 2023, and then they make the Stanley Cup Finals in 2024, and they've got a 3-0 lead. Sure, they lost 4-1 last year. They lost in five games to the Vegas Golden Knights, but they learned. They got a lot of experience from that run and used a lot of the same cast to head into this 2024 Stanley Cup playoffs. And they did it with some crazy good additions. OEL on the back end, looking solid. Evan Rodriguez, this guy's an absolute monster. And of course, the same staff as before. The 24 14 draft guys. You've got Aaron Eckblad, you've got Sam Reinhardt, you've got Sam Bennett, all up there. You've got Matthew Kachuk, the guy that Huberto was traded for, alongside of Mackenzie Weger, doing some incredible damage too. Sure, Kachuk didn't have as well of a point-producing season as last year. Last year, he had a career-high 109 points. This year, he only had 20 fewer points, but he's still gone out there as a point-per-game guy in the playoffs, and the way he has carried himself, the way he has carried his team, the way he's carried parts of his line, sure, he's not scoring as many goals, but he's still acting as an adjective force that makes everybody's lives around him easier. And it makes the opponent's lives harder. You'll see a lot of replies on this Twitter thread talking about how Matthew Kachuk has been such an amazing addition, how he's changed the culture of the team. Let's go out there and try to find some. So Huberto has to be sick to his stomach. Uyghur as well, Giant Blue Ring goes out there and replies. True. Huberto probably feels it more though since he was considered a franchise goat there. Considered by who? His mom and Alan Walsh? He was also the all-time leader in points before the trade, there you go, also the leader in pretty much every offensive category, and was also extremely clutch, and darn good in the PK too. Just imagine if he had stayed with the Florida Panthers. If he had stayed, they would not be where they are now. Kachuk completely reshaped the identity of that team. Now, I will say it is an interesting thought experiment to have, because for Jonathan Huberdeau, if he's playing in Florida in 2023 and in 2024, let's say these two years were spent with the Panthers, the question is, does he still get 115 points? Does he still drop off to 55 points the next year? What does Huberto's production look like if he stays with the Panthers? And are the Panthers good enough to play with a Huberto-led offensive squad into the playoffs and make the finals two years in a row? 
honestly, you could very well say no, because Jonathan Huberto, the warts that he had started to show with Calgary, were very apparent, and it's not like he sucked completely from this year over into this year, it's just that the Calgary Flames play such a different style on the rush that doesn't allow Huberto to expand on the same skills that he had honed and developed for 10 years with Florida. This version of Huberto probably would have still existed for a little bit, maybe he doesn't get 115 points again, maybe he gets like 90, but he wouldn't have been as bad in Calgary. And it's not necessarily, oh, because he's playing with Barkov, that's why he got so many points. It's the style, it's the way that Florida is able to convert offensive rush chances. Huberto wasn't really used to the way that Calgary liked to take their time and be a little bit more patient. It's really been a divergent from what he's used to, and as a result, it's taken him two years to try to get at the snuff and keep up with that, all while making $10.5 million a year in the process starting this year. And now, at 31 years old, signed on to this contract till he's going to be, what is that, 38? This is looking like a terrible deal. Terrible, terrible contract for a guy that was a part of a team that eventually went on to win multiple playoff rounds without him. Matthew Kachuk, on the other hand, he's a lot more of a versatile player, I would say. His skill set is more diverse, and this is where you start to see how even though he had a decline in point production this previous year, he is still considered one of the better players on this team, one of the more important guys, maybe even a Conn Smythe candidate if you wanted to go down that path. I mean, if you go over to the playoff scoring right now, sure, McDavid and Dreisaitl are going to be 1-2 and two in points, but Florida, right there, you've got Alexander Barkov, you've got Carter Verhage, you've got Matthew Kachuk, all of these guys up at the top alongside of each other. Even though they're all behind Bouchard, Drysdale, and McDavid, they have been shutting those Oilers guys down. So the idea of Kachuk completely reshaping the identity of this team, yeah, I don't know if Jonathan Huberdeau would have been able to keep up with this considering the way he ended up declining and whether or not he would be able to translate that offensive production from his last Florida year to the next season's. Let's go back over to this Twitter thread and read what else has been talked about. Florida might not even be there, though, if not for Huberto and the trade, so there's that. The Panthers wouldn't be here with Huberto and no Kachuk. No way they're getting there with Huberto. Kachuk is a huge reason and a missing piece that made the team that you're watching today. And then you have this. Flames fans are feeling even more sick, knowing that Barkov is the only reason Huberto got to 100 plus points and will never even sniff that again at 10.5 mil till 2031. So at the end of the day, Jonathan Huberto is a man who maybe is sick to his stomach. Maybe he's not. Maybe he's just, you know, chilling because he's making a lot of money every single year. But in order to look at your old team, the team that you were pretty much the heart and soul of for a good few years and say, yeah, they're on to bigger and better things without me, and I was with this team for 10 years. That probably has a weird sting to it, but of course, I'm not going to go out there and speak for Jonathan Huberdeau. I did just find it interesting how this conversation popped up and has been sort of the subject of a lot of memes lately. I mean, if you search up Huberdeau's name on Twitter, you'll see a lot of people conversing about how his contract is bad and how he left the team and how they're better without him and how Kachuk is really good, etc., etc. I mean, hockey fans are going to talk about what hockey fans talk about, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Below. How do you feel about Jonathan Huberdeau and this trade ever since it happened two years ago? The Calgary Flames are really not looking at this trade in a positive light. Huberdeau has not lived up or barely even met the expectations that were bestowed upon him. Meanwhile, you've got Matthew Kachuk in the Florida Panthers system. He's made back-to-back -back Stanley Cup Finals. He could be a Conn Smythe winner. Who really knows? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Huberdeau and Kachuk and this entire Florida Panthers thing right now. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.